Shalom, shalom, Baruch haba b'shem Yeshua. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Jesus. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, and the ending, who was, and is, and is to come, the Lord, God, Almighty, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. That's according to Isaiah 9, verse 6, Micah 5, verse 2, Revelations 1, John chapter 1, and Colossians chapter 1, they all speak of Jesus, Yeshua, as God Almighty, as God in the flesh. Amen. I do believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the three, are one, according to John chapter 14, and 1 John 5, 7, in the King James Bible. Amen. And it is written, The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is a second greatest commandment. And upon those two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. Amen. That's according to Jesus' words more or less uh, sort of paraphrasing there but that's uh, what the gospels indicate and uh, that's what our goal should be uh, in life in my opinion is to first uh, love and serve God and uh, secondly love and serve your neighbor as yourself amen now with all that said I, I wanted to talk about uh something that's a, a little bit on my radar um i haven't had any huge confirmations or anything like that but this is something that i usually talk about every uh year around the summer time uh as you know there's some pretty clear clues as to something possibly happening uh in the summer Okay, with the flooding of the Nile season, uh, which is one of the uh, seasons of Egypt. Okay, and it has to do with the death and resurrection of Osiris, the pagan sun god. And therefore, I believe it also alludes to the rise of the coming Antichrist, who is supposedly Osiris reincarnated. Okay, the rise of the black sun, the rise of the... Uh, son of Satan essentially now with that said uh, let's take a look at some slides I put together um, this here is Zechariah 11 verse 17 woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock the sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye his arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. Okay, this is, I believe, speaking of, of Lucifer and his uh, false shepherds. Okay, sort of like the Antichrist. And, you know, it's, I don't believe this is speaking uh, literally. I don't think the Lord is literally going to cut off his arm and gouge out his eye. But rather, that it's a symbolic representation of you know, making his eyesight darkened and uh, cutting off his arm in the sense of reducing his ability to act. Okay, so a lot of times uh, biblical language is figurative. For instance, in Isaiah 53, it says, The arm of the Lord is revealed, okay, through the Messiah. That's not speaking about a literal arm. <laughs> That's speaking about Christ being the embodiment of the actions of the Lord on the earth as God in the flesh. Amen. Now, with that said, I do believe that this iPad Go 2 uh, reference to the uh, young child here with the dark eye and the, the cut off arm. I believe that's a reference to essentially Tammuz or Horus, okay? Uh, but it's also an allusion to Osiris. 
and Nimrod, okay, the pagan sun god. As I believe that the myth goes that Osiris was killed, his, his body parts were cut up and thrown into the Nile, the Nile River, and then somehow uh, he became the sun, I believe, and then uh, he was reincarnated through his son, uh, Horus. Okay, so that's the mythology. So I think this child here represents Horus or Tammuz, the pagan sun god reincarnated. Okay, hopefully that made sense. Um, and here we see on the right here, this sort of Mother Mary figure. Okay, I believe this is a reference to Isis, the so-called Queen of Heaven, uh, who is the same as Semiramis. Okay, she is the moon goddess, and uh, Horus or Tammuz is a sun god, okay, the sun and the moon. Uh, it's, a, it's a complete mockery. Uh, and it's uh, the false Luciferian trinity. Okay. They're made up myths by Lucifer. Okay. Yet the Antichrist, I believe, will uh, sort of fall in line with this mythology. Now, this I Bet Go 2 film also talks about the rise of the Antichrist. So, this here, I believe, is just another symbol of the Antichrist coming uh, into power. Okay, now let's see if there's any other. Okay, yeah, so here we see the same boy with the eye darkened. He is resurrected and essentially uh, is some sort of false savior. And he's pretty much dressed as a Sufi whirling dervish person. Uh, which sort of is like a, an Islamic savior of sorts. Um, so I'm not sure how that ties into the uh, Egyptian religion, but somehow, you know, it's supposed to be another symbol of the rise of, uh, of Horus or Tammuz, okay? Uh, so here we see the, the resurrection of the boy. Uh, again, I believe rising into power as a false savior, perhaps as Osiris resurrected. Okay. Now bear with me. I am <laughs> I'm hopefully getting to uh something that's uh quite interesting here, but again here we see the uh pagan sun god Apollo, Nimrod, Zeus, and Osiris, okay? They're all basically the sun god, basically Lucifer worship, okay? And uh they always have, you know, their other half so to speak uh, which is the moon goddess okay now we also see that uh, the moon goddess is also worshipped and uh, here we see some uh, pop Hollywood stars today we have Beyonce uh, we have uh, I, I can't remember all these celebrities names but <laughs> They are celebrities. I think this is Madonna on the far left and Katy Perry here. Okay. Now, in Jeremiah 7, it makes a reference to, to this Queen of Heaven. It says, The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offering unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Okay. So, let's just take a pause right there. We've established that the Luciferians, you know, they worship the, the pagan sun god and the pagan moon goddess, okay? And uh, essentially it fits in with this uh, pagan Luciferian trinity of the mother moon goddess, the father sun god, and the reincarnated sun sun god. Okay, it is the false trinity of Lucifer. Now, let's take a look at uh, this IPEGO 2 scene. <clears throat> now, essentially, when I first saw this, I was listening to some Christian prophecies about, uh, you know, the sinking of 
the USS aircraft carriers in the Strait of Hormuz near the Persian Gulf. And so I assumed that these objects here are pretty much uh, a reference to the capsizing uh, US aircraft carriers into the ocean. Okay, you see them protruding as if they are sinking ships. And you also see an explosion here. Okay, maybe alluding to an explosion on the aircraft carriers. Now that still may be the case, but I'm wondering also if th these could actually be oil uh, tankers uh, transporting oil. Okay, and it might be uh, possibly a attack on our oil supply, uh, perhaps in the Strait of Hormuz. So that's something to consider. I think most of the uh, a large portion of the world's uh, oil supply, I think, comes from the Persian Gulf and the Strait of Hormuz, uh, which is sort of near the Nile River. And this obviously is a representation of the Nile River because this is Isis, okay? And Isis, according to the mythology, uh, cries a river, uh, which is the start of the Egyptian New Year, the flooding of the Nile. Okay, and it happens around the time of the summer solstice, which is about June 21st or 22nd of every year. So we have this scene being linked to a certain time period, a certain season of Egypt, which is the summer season after the solar, uh, the sun solstice. Uh, and therefore, you know, this is something to watch, in my opinion. And this could be hinting at the sinking of oil tankers or USS aircraft carriers in the Strait of Hormuz or near the Nile River. Okay. Now, of course, here here's the dead body of uh, Horus or Osiris. Okay. The uh, so the coming Antichrist, okay, and she's crying over his uh, over his death. Okay, this is Isis weeping uh, for the death of Osiris. Okay, and I'll get into the mythology, but let's look at this scene here. Okay, so uh, that that is interesting. It goes from this scene to the one eye symbolism. Okay, the idol shepherd. Uh, again, uh, referring to the death and resurrection of the uh, pagan sun god Osiris. Now, before that scene came, uh, it shows this as well. Okay, an attack on some sort of Islamic mosque. But even before that, that it shows this. Now it shows on his uh, eyes a reflection. It says NASDAQ here, S&P 500, and it says market plunge. Okay, so the markets are plunging. It's talking about a dive in the stock market it's something he's seen on the news and then it says war coverage or coverage news okay dollars us okay it's i think it's about the the collapse of the petrodollar the collapse of the oil industry in my opinion and also world war three now let's continue now here we see the this I believe is a reference to the Masons, the square and the compass. And there's three square and compass uh, bomber jets. And they basically uh, go and bomb an, an Islamic temple, I believe uh, somewhere in the Middle East, probably a false flag event to escalate tensions to escalate World War III, per perhaps even uh, this summer. So 
that's something to watch for as well. Perhaps a false flag bombing in the Middle East and perhaps Iran or, or another Muslim country in order to increase tensions between the West and the Muslim nations. Okay, let's continue. And then it shows Isis weeping over uh, over Osiris and the flooding of the Nile season with perhaps a sinking oil uh, oil carriers or USS aircraft carriers. Okay, now let's look at some of the mythology. Let's see. Um, well... According to the Luciferians, uh, one of their satanic holy days is, uh, you know, it's called the Summer Solstice. I think it's called uh, Lisa or something like that. And, you know, it's, it's a time that they regard, the Luciferians regard this day, the Summer Solstice, uh, as one of their, you know, special days. So they probably have some sacrifices uh, planned out uh, in which they kill people to uh, sacrifice to their gods. Okay, so that's something to consider. Here we see that uh, being done in the Bible in 2 Kings 23 verse 5. And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burned incense unto Baal, the pagan sun god, to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the hosts of heaven. Okay, so let's take a look at an article here. This is from Egypt Today, okay? And this is from, uh, I guess it was updated Sunday, June 2020, or published June 2020. Okay, it says Egypt and the gift of the Nile. And according to their mythology, uh, it says here, when many contemplate the name Nile, the first thing that comes to their minds is Egypt. Okay, so it's about the Nile River. And it says here, there are many myths associated with the Nile, including that the Nile is a gift of the gods, that its flood season begins with the appearance of the brightest star, which is a star Sirius that appears around the summer solstice. And it says, when it overflows, it brings prosperity and fertility. The gods control the river and the deity Kanum is the lord of the water who brings prosperity and creates humans from the mud of the Nile River flood. Okay, false, false doctrine. <laughs> okay, this is pagan, uh, pagan deception. Okay, and it says the deity Habi controls the flood of the Nile because he is both genders and therefore uh, very fertile. Uh, parts of the body of the severed god Osiris is in the Nile. And that the Nile's flood and its decline were linked to the death and resurrection of Osiris and the myth of worshipping the Nile animals, like the crocodile DT Sobek. Okay. And it says here, The ancient Egyptians thought that, that the Nile is a gift of the gods. They equated it with life itself. And they organized their daily lives according to the high and low levels of its water. The Egyptian calendar was based on the three seasons of the Nile. Uh, the flood, the agriculture, and the harvest seasons. Okay, there's three seasons. And it seems like the flood is the first season. And it says, The flood season began with the appearance of Al-Shari, Al-Yamani, or Sirius, which is a brightest star. Its appearance also means the beginning of a new Egyptian year. Okay, here's a uh, papyrus uh, 
illustration depicting Isis and Osiris, the sun and the moon gods. Okay, and here it says, Herodotus' sayings and recordings show that the flood of the Nile was coincident with the summer solstice phenomenon. That is June 22nd and 23rd of every year. Okay, so is there a possibility that Ipego 2 is hinting at some sort of conflict in the Middle East, some sort of war bombing, or some sort of sinking of uh, oil aircraft carriers uh, this summer in the Nile season? Very possible. It's something we should be uh, watching for just so that we understand. Uh, what their plan is okay it's, I think it's probably part of the collapse of the system the collapse of the current world order in order to bring in the great reset and the rise of the Antichrist false savior out of the midst of chaos and death and destruction okay and it says here because the Nile means life when it overflows, it brings prosperity and fertility to the soil and people around it. But if its water level rises too much, people lose their mud houses and so on and so forth. Thus, it was important for the gods to control the river. The two main deities involved in organizing this process are Kanum and Hopi, according to legend. Okay, and it goes into some mythology here. And then, let's see, let's get to the part where it talks about um, Osiris. It says here, in addition, uh, Osiris played a role in one of the famous legends of the Nile. And this legend says that Osiris was killed by his brother Set because of jealousy. His body was cut into 40 pieces and thrown into the Nile which in turn threw shredded parts of Osiris' body in the Mediterranean Sea. However, his wife Isis succeeded in finding and collecting his body parts, and thanks to the magic powers she possessed, false, Isis managed to revive Osiris and conceive a child, which is Horus. And uh, he grew up in the papyrus field in the delta, far from his malevolent uncle Set. Okay, later the god Horus succeeded in avenging his father Osiris by killing his uncle Set. And from here the death and resurrection of Osiris became associated with the flood of the Nile and the decline of its water level. Okay, and it says here, some sources say that the ancient Egyptians believed that the flood of the Nile was the tears of Isis, mourning the death of her husband Osiris, which is which is what is now called in Egypt Wafa el Nile, loyalty of the Nile, which Egyptians celebrate for two weeks, starting from August fifteenth. Okay. So again, uh, you know, the flood of the Nile is connected with the uh, death and rebirth of uh, Osiris, the pagan sun god, and uh, Horus is supposedly a reincarnation of Osiris. And, you know, the Luciferians, I believe, consider the coming Antichrist, the coming one world dictator, uh, to be the resurrection of Osiris, or Nimrod, or Zeus, or any other pagan god, okay? They're all one in the same. Uh, to the Luciferians, I believe that is what they believe. Okay, so uh, something to watch for. It could be a summer of mayhem. Okay, if there is an attack on the oil supply, it would literally shut everything down. There would be, you know, nothing on the shelves. There would be no gas. Okay, it would be utter and complete chaos and anarchy. For the summer okay so these are things to watch for i believe the rapture is very soon let us uh, watch and pray that we are counted worthy to escape according to jesus's words in luke 21 36 
and shalom. Until next time, amen.